so in economics generally we are mainly concerned with model building and sometimes abstract issues are also taken up and in managerial economics practical problems and solutions to practical problems and using the tools concepts and techniques that are available in economics for the purpose of solving of business problems is the study of managerial economics let us see the diagram given below here we all know that business administration or for that matter any manager or any company or firm or any manager is normally confronted with numerous decision problems he need to take several decisions on several aspects starting from the location of the firm quantity of product and pricing decision advertisement investment like that there are numerous decisions the a manager has to take so he is always confronted with a decision problem and he needs a solution to the optimal solutions to the decision problems and here managerial economics comes to his rescue or managerial economics helps or aid the manager uh, manager in discharging his functions and for this purpose the body of literature has been drawn from traditional economic theory and also from other decision sciences so a separate body of literature has been developed over a period of years known as the managerial economics and the main concepts and analytical tools are derived from microeconomic theory and also decision sciences like uh, statistics operations research linear programming mathematics etc so let us see the salient features of uh, managerial economics what are the important features of uh, managerial economics and before that let us see what is the difference between business economics and managerial economics in some of the textbooks you will find the word business economics so strictly speaking these two are used interchangeably some economists use as use this word as business economics and some people use managerial economics but uh, if you want to have a distinction you can do it as uh, the word business has a narrow connotation whereas managerial economics means uh, the principles uh, the concepts the analytical tools they can be applied to not only business but also to non profit organizations like uh, museums churches or service organizations voluntary organizations or educational institutions where profit may not be the motive non profit organizations also you can apply the concepts then the word business may not be relevant so managerial economics is a better word or broader term compared to the term business economics now managerial economics is uh, pragmatic for example in microeconomics uh, we use the technique of separation of price effect into income effect and substitution effect such a type of a theoretical developments model building we don't use in managerial economics it has little relevance here and those tools which are practical and which can be used in real life are adopted here like uh, uh, king to demand curve model or say price stability and monopoly pricing discriminating pricing these are all relevant to the managerial economics it is more pragmatic that is more practical in nature and it is eclectic in nature eclectic the word eclectic here means uh, it has borrowed several concepts from several disciplines as i told you operations research linear programming mathematics statistics accounting marketing all these have contributed to the development of managerial economics that's why it is called eclectic in nature that is borrowing from different disciplines and it is a normative in character economics is sometimes defined as a positive economics and normative economics what is positive economics and what is normative positive economics means it simply explains the relations without any value judgment take the case of law of diminishing marginal utility the law says that as quantity goes on increasing additional satisfaction or additional utility or marginal utility gradually diminishes whether it is good or bad it's not the concern it simply explains what happens in a given situation without any value judgment that is called positive economics that is a descriptive in character whereas normative economics is prescriptive it prescribes a choice a solution to a given problem for example during times of inflation 
the government has to adopt monetary measures or fiscal measures. These are called prescriptive policies. So similarly when a manager is confronted with a decision problem, he has to offer a solution to the uh, top management. Uh, he should suggest a solution to a problem. So it is the managerial economics is also prescriptive or normative. In the while discussing about the business economics, we have seen that it has universal applicability. The concepts can be applied to business and also other units of man, other other units of management. And then, even though it has borrowed from different disciplines, the roots of managerial economics spring from microeconomic theory. That means majority of the concepts, tools, techniques widely used in economics are adopted in managerial economics. That's why if you look at the contents of managerial economics, you feel, you feel that it's more or less microeconomics in character. But the only thing is that there is a difference in the orientation. Here you have to look from the point of view of management and how it is useful to solve a problem. And in economics we study as a theoretical model and building of models and developing some abstract models also. We have seen the nature of managerial economics. It is a pragmatic, eclectic in nature, normative in character and the main body of literature is drawn from microeconomics. And let us see the scope of uh, managerial economics or what is the core content of managerial economics and what are the items or topics that are covered in managerial economics. So briefly let me see, uh, let me narrate the topics that are covered in managerial economics. Mainly demand analysis and forecasting of demand. The first and foremost topic for managerial economics is demand analysis and forecasting of demand. So the importance for this is how much a firm can produce depends on the capacity of the plant, we know that. But how much it must try to produce or endeavor to produce depends on the demand for the product. Unless there is demand for the product, production is not, is not required, is unwarranted. So, depending on the demand for the product, the production manager has to plan the production schedules. There should be demand for the product. Without demand, production is unwarranted. What happens if demand falls short of production, for example? Is there any way of rectifying or balancing these two? For example, here managerial economist has to think of uh, creating demand or increasing demand or creating more demand by way of uh, advertising or other sales promotion methods. And uh, forecasting of demand, what, is, what do you mean by forecasting? Like weather forecast, a forecast is a prediction of future event. And in case of demand forecasting, we try to predict the future sales be it next one month or next six months or one year. So that is fundamental based on the sales forecast, production schedules are planned, financial arrangements are made, manpower requirements are made and the very success or failure of a firm mainly depends on the how accurate the sales forecasts are. So we need to study what are the methods of forecasting the demand for existing products and what are the methods of forecasting the demand for new products. That is one major area in managerial economics. Demand, what is demand and then forecasting of demand, uh, etc. Okay. Theory of production. What product has to produce, what quantities have to be produced is the main concern in case of uh, production. Here, the managerial economist is concerned with uh, input-output decisions. What happens to output when inputs are mixed in a, in a given proportion? For example, if, if all the inputs are held constant and only one input is varied, what happens to output? Whether output goes on increasing or reach a increase at an increasing rate and then reaches a maximum and then diminishes, what is the how output varies or responds when inputs are all inputs are held constant and one input is varied that is known as the, the law of variable proportions and similarly other uh, laws there are there so we need to study demand analysis and pro forecasting of demand and production decisions that is input output decisions and cost analysis that is output and cost how costs vary when output varies whether costs also increase or costs remain the same. 
So we know that there are certain costs which remain constant irrespective of the level of output like fixed costs. So output cost output relations and price output relations. Managerial economics is mainly concerned with the price, what are the pricing objectives of a business firm and how pricing decisions are made under different given set of conditions. Another area is a profit analysis, management of profit and investment decisions. These are the core content of managerial economics. Okay. Now, from this it, it appears that most of the areas are nothing but microeconomics in character. So let us discuss in detail the details of managerial microeconomics. So, the demand which we refer to is known as market demand and market demand is the sum of individual consumers demands. So, the starting point must be the derivation of individual consumers demand and once we know the individual consumers demand by adding the demands of all individuals you will get the market demand for a commodity. So, the starting point is uh, how derivation of individual consumers demand by studying the consumers equilibrium or the behavior of consumer, consumer behavior or better call it as uh, consumers equilibrium. There are two approaches to study consumers equilibrium. One is called neoclassical cardinal utility approach also called as uh, Marshallian utility approach and second one is called uh, indifference curve approach or ordinal utility approach. So the first approach, the only thing is by using any other method, we can derive the consumer's demand curve. We can explain the consumer's equilibrium and derive the consumer's demand curve by using either of the methods. But the first method is based on a simple assumption that utility can be measured. What do you mean by utility? Utility means want satisfying power of a commodity. For example, if a consumer takes one apple, he gets some satisfaction. Can we measure the satisfaction derived by consumer by consuming a unit of a commodity like apple? It's not physically possible. But uh, we, this uh, first approach, cardinal approach makes the assumption that utility can be measured or uh, quantified. So the, there are three important uh, principles in the cardinal approach. One is called law of diminishing marginal utility. It's a universal human experience. That's why it is called a law. What does it uh, explain? So the law of diminishing marginal utility says that as quantity consumed of a commodity goes on increasing, marginal utility diminishes. Marginal utility, that is extra satisfaction derived with the consumer from extra unit must eventually come down. That's a universal experience. That's why it is called law of diminishing marginal utility. And it is the reason for the downward sloping of demand curve. We all know that demand curve slopes downwards from left to right. Why demand curve slopes downwards? Economists could explain the reason by using the law of diminishing marginal utility. Second principle is called law of equimarginal principle. That the, the, in simple it says that if a decision maker is having a limited quantity of a resource and if, a, if that resource are having two or more uses then he can allocate the units in such a way that the marginal benefit or marginal utility from both the uses are equal. That is called, that's why it is called equi marginal principle. He has to see that the marginal utility from use A and must be equal to marginal utility from use V. So that is the principle of law of equi marginal principle and we can also explain what is the optimum quantity consumer uses so, so that he can get maximum satisfaction and also derivation of consumer's equilibrium. And second one is indifference curve approach to consumer's equilibrium or consumer behavior. So this indifference curve, the later economists they have criticized the first approach because utility being subjective element cannot be measured. How can we develop a model based on a wrong assumption? So FY Edgeworth has invented this uh, indifference curve analysis and later economists like Wilfred Pareto, he made popular this technique and RGD, Allen and J.R. Hicks, these are the two people who developed who, this uh, technique known as indifference curve analysis. Here the two main analytical tools are indifference curve and budget line. Okay. Using these two together we can determine the consumer's equilibrium and also we can also de derive the individual consumers demand curve. So this is background literature for 
demand analysis. So friends, let us start with uh, the meaning of